The first page in our taco manual takes us to an iconic recipe for barbacoa. Now, if you don't know what barbacoa is, I wish I could take you to Mexico City to El Hidalguense or maybe Arroyo, or even better, I would take you down into the southern state of Oaxaca to one of my favorite barbacoa restaurants called La Capilla, but I can't. So I'm going to show you how to get to that beautiful, tender meat falling off the bone infused with classic Mexican flavor using a slow cooker. Yeah, and it actually is incredibly good. You don't have to build a pit in your backyard, you just need to have a slow cooker. And instead of using the traditional lamb or goat that you might find in central or southern Mexico, I'm gonna show you how to make it with beef short ribs. Now, why short ribs and not like a chuck roast, which you could use if you wanted to? Because the short rib has this incredibly magical texture. And it reminds me more of what I get out of those beautiful pits in central and southern Mexico than just using a regular chuck roast. So I have put together four and a half, four and a half pounds about of beautiful short ribs. Now I'm working with a slow cooker here that has an insert that is uh, usable on the stove top. That's why I'm always telling everybody, you got to get one that has that stove top safe insert. I put it directly over the fire there and I'm going to start heating it up because my first step here is going to be to brown them. Now in a classic Mexican barbacoa done in a, a wood fired pit in the ground, they don't do the browning step because they're putting it into this very, very hot pit and it starts to brown sort of instantly. But for our slow cooker version, we have to actually create that browned quality to give depth of flavor to what we're doing here. So first thing is to put a little bit of oil in this slow cooker. If your slow cooker does not have a stovetop safe insert, then you'll need to do this in a large skillet. I would prefer a 12 inch um, cast iron pan because it holds heat and you can get a really good sear on things. Next thing I'm gonna do is to sprinkle some salt evenly over the short ribs here. And this will take a little more than what you might expect when you're seasoning meat. You always want to get that on there. Then a couple at a time, I'm going to lay these guys into this pan and start to sear them, turning them until they are completely browned on all sides. Once those are browned, I'll take them out and store them over here and then brown the other two. But in the meantime, I'm going to make a classic adobo, red chili adobo, red chili marinade that they use in Oaxaca for their barbacoa. So we're going to start with two dried chilies. Now, if dried chilies seem to be like completely out of your purview, I'm going to suggest that you go online and buy these or go to a Mexican grocery store or perhaps your regular grocery store sells the whole chili pods. Much better flavor than what you would get out of a ground chili powder. Now this is an ancho chili. I'm using a couple of these guys. You just tear them open, uh, pull off the stem end of it and shake out all of the seeds. And then I'm going to tear them up and put them into a blender jar. So these things are very, they're, they're kind of leathery feeling and you'll have to tear them, I would say into about four pieces each. This is a slightly smaller of the ancho chili, so it'll be easier for me to tear up here. And I'll do it in about three pieces there, throw those in. These are guajillo chilies. They already have the stem torn off of them. So I'm just gonna open them up like this. Sometimes you'll see them this way in the store. And then these are thin skinned and not so leathery as the, uh, the ancho chilies are. Um, and they add a very bright flavor. Now you're probably wondering why I'm combining the two. That has to do with the fact that these have really bright flavor. The anchos have a sweeter flavor. Are either one of them very hot? No, this is not going to come out as a very hot dish, but it's going to be one that is full of flavor. Now, the next thing that I'm going to add is kind of hot. I'm going to add a couple of these uh, chipotle chilies to the mix here. 
and those are going to be smoky, slightly sweet, and medium hot. I have four garlic cloves just peeled. Throw those guys in there. Um, I need a couple of tablespoons of vinegar. Some people like it a little bit more tangy than the, the two tablespoons will give you, but that's what I'm going to be putting in mine today. I need a, a full teaspoon of salt that's going to go in here. And that's a measured amount. We're not tasting this. We're just put it, starting off here with that one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to put in about a half a teaspoon of Mexican oregano, about a half a teaspoon of ground Mexican cinnamon. You can use any kind of cinnamon here, but Mexican cinnamon is a slightly different flavor and variety. And then the last thing that we have is some um, black pepper, about a half a teaspoon of that. I like spices that are ground fresh. So I've got a little mortar over here, Mexican molcajete, and I'm just gonna crush these, these black peppercorns up and then add those to the blender jar. Two cups of water go in here and we're gonna blend this as absolutely smooth as possible. These are beautifully browned now on all sides. And we've got the marinade beautifully blended until it's very smooth. I'm going to turn this off and I don't really need all of this fat that's in here. There's been a bunch that's rendered from the, the short ribs here. So I'm just going to tip this off over here if I can get it held right. Um, just so that I can get start with a slow cooker that basically just has a very little bit of fat in the bottom of it. Now this is the moment that we have to talk about the difference in style between barbacoa in the central part of Mexico and in the southern part in Oaxaca. Uh, number one, the barbacoa in central Mexico doesn't have this red chili marinade on it that we um, have made for this. The Oaxacan one does. In the central part of Mexico, they wrap all of the meat before they put it into the pit in agave leaves. Really hard for us to do here in the United States. But in Oaxaca, they use leaves to season this, to flavor it, that are from the avocado tree. And luckily, online or in your Mexican grocery store, you can buy these beautiful dried avocado leaves. What do they taste like? cross between, say, a bay leaf and a little something anise -y. A, a little bit of that licorice flavor in there, but it's gentle and it's really, really delicious with the meat. So in the slow cooker base here, I'm going to put, um, I don't know, six or seven of these leaves. Um, in Oaxaca, they love this flavor so much that they use a lot of these leaves here. So I'm going to put them down there, half of them down there, and then I will nestle these guys in um, that are browned now and then we'll put some more of well we'll put the marinade over everything let's see if we can get that yeah that looks really nice there we've got our marinade last you saw this marinade it was just starting to blend now it is blended till it's incredibly smooth now I'm using this Vitamix blender, which is a high speed blender, and it can blend it absolutely smooth. If your blender doesn't blend very smooth, I suggest that you set a medium mesh strainer over here and just pour it through to catch any of the tough skins that did not get completely blended here. Um, with this blender, I don't really have to take that step. So I'm going to pour the marinade now over the short ribs. They're not submerged, but there's a good amount of marinade there. And we'll put the remaining avocado leaves here over the top. Now you want to make sure that they touch the marinade. They're not just hovering above the marinade because the moisture is what will start to leach out their beautiful flavor. So there you go with that. We've got the top of the, the slow cooker to go on. 
And now all of this will just go into the slow cooker base. We will go on high for, well, you can check it. After four hours would be your minimum, but usually it takes five to six hours for this to cook until that meat will completely fall off the bone. Okay, it's been about five hours now, five excruciating hours of smelling this deliciousness in the kitchen here. Um, and I think it's ready to go now. We're going to see all that, release all that beautiful steam. And the really cool thing is that you can smell the avocado leaves. They just add so much different dimension. I would say you get a little of that anise-like smell uh, with them. Uh, but they're also sort of just herby, okay? So I'm going to just get rid of those leaves here. They've done all that they can for the barbacoa. And then I'm going to take the I'm going to take the short ribs out and they should be fall off the bone tender at this point. You can see how easy they just come right off the bone there. But I want to take them all out because this is the point at which I have to judge what I want to do with this juice, this really, really delicious juice that is flavored with that red chili marinade. Um, and there's a lot of it in here. And because I want to use this as a taco filling, now if I was just going to do it on a plate, which is absolutely delicious, um, I would keep this pretty brothy, but for a taco presentation, I want it to be less brothy. I want to have the concentration, shall we say, of these beautiful juices now. So I'm just going to pick up the insert here to the slow cooker and just put it directly over the flame. And now I can just allow that to reduce for a little while. Now you may think that it's a little fatty um, and so you may want to skip a uh, skim a little bit of that fat off the top let me just show you what that is I think I'm going to kind of leave it in here but I could just take some of that off like that and then I could even save this for sauteing some potatoes. It'd be really good for that. Or you could um, just pitch it if you want to. But I'm going to let this reduce until it started to get some thickness. So I notice a little bit of consistency. It doesn't look so watery. I'm just pulling the meat off of the bones here um, and shredding it with a fork. You'll probably find right next to the bone a little connective tissue. Um, I usually just get rid of that because it's a little chewier than this absolutely luscious meat here. Um, it's a coarse shred. I don't go very fine with that at all because I think it makes a better taco. It stays in the taco better. So we're going to put that all here. I don't know if you can hear this uh, reducing juices have been going for about... Um, a little over 10 minutes now. Um, they're starting to get a little noisier, which means that the liquid has evaporated um, from them a lot. I'm going to turn this off now. Um, when you hear that sort of more of a sizzling thing, it indicates that a lot of moisture has reduced out of it. So they're, you, they're noticeably thicker. I want to give these a taste because I have to make sure that the salt is right on it. This is what's really going to give this its final flavor. Mm. Okay, oh, it's so good. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just give it a little bit of salt here. I'm going to use a little bit of coarse salt um, when we make the tacos because I think that that's a, a really good thing. Uh, with the juices here tipped up, I'll just spoon some of them or ladle some of them over the meat. And that, that's where all of your really, really wonderful flavor will come from here. So I'm going to save. I'm not using all of it here. I'm going to save some of it off to the side. Make sure that the juices are evenly distributed um, down into the bottom of this gorgeous shredded short rib there. And now let's build a taco. <laughs> so this is so iconic to me. 
I think it's just absolutely spectacular to be able to have this long cooked meat with very traditional flavors. And in very traditional Mexican style, we will build these flat on a plate, not trying to make them cupped up or anything. This is uh, what you would find certainly in every uh, taqueria. Uh, a little bit of this meat, and for me, this is a joy that should continue for quite some time, meaning that you're not looking to just have one or two tacos here. Um, so just uh, about an ounce and a half of meat on each one of them. You've got lots of choices here to put as garnishes on it. Um, I like uh, salsa verde on this one. You might like to get some Mexican hot sauce and put that over the top of this. I like them both really. But something like a tamasula would work for that. Um, I like to sprinkle a little bit of chopped white onion over the top or you might like to slice your white onion. Um, for me, just reinforcing the cilantro flavor that is in the green salsa um, is always really welcome to me. And then I've got, of course, always a couple of limes that we can put on the plate there to give it that real beautiful brightness that contrasts so wonderfully to that slow cooked short rib. This is iconic Mexico.